What I have found is that there are four principles through the, the genesis of surrender. Uh, there are four principles to begin the journey of surrender. And um, these principles, we, we saw them in, in our interaction when we first, and I think, not I think, I know in a previous video, um, we, we spoke of this, you spoke of that when, when you first called me, you were calling around um, trying to find a, a therapist and you were doing so more so because you had gotten an ultimatum from your ex-wife, uh, uh, your wife at the time. And uh, you called nine therapists and I was the ninth therapist. And I was, I was, correct me if I'm wrong, was I the only one who answered or there were others who answered and said that they couldn't, they couldn't engage? Uh, uh, let me remember that. No other answers. No so other there were answers. no answers until the ninth answer, which, yeah. which, which was, which was myself. So one of the things that I learned throughout that encounter um, in the beginning of things is that in order for us to got, to have gotten that breakthrough that we got, breakthrough meaning that we, we finally were able to begin to engage in a way that it formed what we call therapeutic alliance, um, was when these four principles that I'm going to share right now uh, manifested themselves or they were, they were embraced. So the, the first principle for the beginning of the journey of surrender is this. And write this down, friends, if you're watching, so you can have it um, and keep it with you. The first principle is yield. You must yield to the desire for something better in your life. Yield to the desire for something better in your life. This requires humility. Because accepting that we do not know it all requires humility. Uh, especially for us men, it's hard for us to admit that um, I may have to open myself up for help. I am not strong enough. I'm not macho enough to just tough it out on my own. So it requires humility um, but to accept that we do not know it all. So, And that's, and that's a, a prime example like to give my, my insight on like yeah. as you go through each step, I can recall the the component of that in that process of like that yield the desire of something better in my life. It was for me, um, it was that very, very heavy point of I was it was the middle of the pandemic. It had just hit New York. My ex-wife was pregnant. She was about uh -huh. to give birth. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten to a place no matter how much um, extreme moments I've been in before that. Um, mm -hmm. Gunfights to sicknesses to whatever. Um, I had never faced that level of um, uncertainty and like dysregulation where I just did not know how to move forward. And it pushed me to surrender um, where I prayed to God and I asked for a direction. Like, how do I possibly build a life that I can raise the sun that doesn't feel the, the the confusion and lostness I feel. And the first step that was given to me was basically I needed I needed repentance. I needed to open the Bible and accept mm. the word. And the first steps in the word of God is you gotta repent to to allow yourself to be pulled out of the sin cycle. I needed to be I needed to stop convincing myself that I could find a comfortable space in sin to, 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 to navigate. I needed to 
open the door for the Holy Spirit to come in and yield to it through repentance. And when I made that decision, the first direction that was given to me when I opened that Bible, prayed and repented for all of my sins was find a doctor, a therapist. You never wanted one. Okay. I'm telling you, you have to get one, but make sure that you're willing to hold space for Jesus Christ. And that's where the nine um, therapists I found by looking up online, looking in the phone book, literally. Um, and I found you as the ninth one, and literally we, we spoke on the phone for almost like 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. it was like, uh, it, was, it, it, it was like a natural flow. And the natural flow came about with me just yielding to the new experience that I, I didn't expect. I didn't know what to expect, but everything from that point on was like uh, I was being um, definitely carried of a level um, mm. spiritually in my flesh. I let my flesh follow. It, it wasn't easy, but my flesh wanted to fight yeah. back, as we'll talk about later, you know, yeah. but um, that's where the Holy Spirit continues to come in at, the, the surrender. So I was wanting to chime in and I'll do yeah. that for, for like every component. No, no, that, that's fine. Where with all, that, that's fine. Where because with all, what it that, actually that, looked like for me. That helps to illustrate uh, the, the points that we're making here. And the reason why it wasn't easy is because it requires humility. And the flesh is naturally arrogant. The flesh does not, humility does not come naturally to the flesh. So in, in, in staying in, in, in embracing humility and in order to fully yield to the desire for something better in one's life, um, it is imperative to stay curious and to stay open to learn, to allow oneself to be teachable. And the reason for that is that new knowledge will lead to new thoughts. New thoughts will lead to new feelings slash experiences because when we feel something we begin to experience something that that feeling is bringing to us and then new feelings and uh, slash experiences will lead to new actions and behaviors we are more emotionally driven than we give ourselves credit for I know people like to talk about the fact that we are rational beings, but that's not really true. Um, the scientific studies have shown about that, that we are driven by emotion. As a matter of fact, nothing we do is without emotion. And when somebody is without emotion, when somebody does not have the capacity to feel um, that's a person that is severely ill. And uh, if I find myself, or at moments when I find myself not feeling, um, like when, for example, uh, about three months ago in the month of May, uh, when I experienced the death of my brother, my only brother, when I received that phone call, that early Saturday morning was about maybe 5 o'clock or 4.30 in the morning when the phone rang. And um, my sister handed me the phone. Um, and they identified, the doctor identified himself as calling from the hospital. And he described that my brother had had three um respiratory infarcts and he said that the third one um he did not survive it and your brother died um there were so many emotions that that flooded me in the moment that i don't know if you if, if you can identify with like when 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 a lot of things converged at once, it's like if a drain, if sources of water come from different directions and they come to the same pipe, it, it is so overwhelming that instead of the water flowing through, 
it's it just stops. It's like everything, all of the sources uh, cancel out the others. And then there is no flow. So I literally felt so many things at once that I, that in, in a few seconds after that, it's like I had no feeling. I was, people will describe that feeling as being numb. I was numb. So that numb feeling or not feeling anything specific um, is a sign that one is in trouble. Um, so we need to feel. So when we learn new information, getting new knowledge, it will lead us to new thoughts and the new thoughts will lead us to new feelings and new experiences. And those new feelings and experiences will now lead us to new behaviors. Which because leads to the next. We, we're going to begin to act accordingly. Which leads to the next principle that, that, that was so important. Is don't, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Yeah. Because I mean, what you just experienced and what you just expressed, you know, is a long time coming in just communication on, on even video. Um, that I can completely relate um, to that feeling with the feeling of my father committing suicide, understanding, and then having even an insight from the Holy Spirit of that convergent feeling you're talking about, that numbness. Um, when in retrospect with time, I think for me subjectively, I, I realized that that vulnerability and, and being willing to feel that, um, it was like a natural surrender. Yeah. Some people go into anger or go into all types of other paths of emotion and the, the path of numbness, of um, disengaging is a form of like physical surrender. Yeah. yeah. You know, your, your fight or flight kick in. And That's true. You, you set still. To, to, to do yourself the least harm and being that's willing the, that's to the freeze. That's a freeze response. The freeze and being willing to communicate about it was the next steps that allow God to continue to open the path. So like I said, I wanted to just um exemplify that story yeah. that you were just talking about with the the, the the next principle of don't be afraid, don't be vulnerable and how you're exampling that and just to continue to show people that we're, we're walking through these processes daily in real life. Um, yeah. You have multiple master's degrees, multiple PhDs, doctors. No one is um, exempt. From no this. one. No one is no exempt one. from this process. No um, one. And that is the, the most important fact. That That's the reason why this process and this program is being yeah. serviced to high value entrepreneurs it's not that we're we're not focused on the general public it's just we understand that influence comes from the top down a lot of people of influence uh, that make a lot of money that are high functioning high value human beings they believe that they're impervious because they suffer in silence but when the people who are leaders start to actually lead properly by being led properly it changes the world, man. It changes the world. Yeah. And, it's, and, it, and it leads into this next stage of um, this next principle, which is don't be vulnerable. I want to let you continue on that. Yeah, yeah. Principle and details. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, um, introducing the second uh, principle uh, for the genesis of surrender. And you mentioned it. I'm going to say it again is don't be afraid to be vulnerable. In other words, admit the truth to yourself and to others that you need help. And um, when, when we were on that first phone call, um, you were beginning to admit that you needed help. But there was a struggle because you hadn't fully embraced that. Uh, because there were moments that you would say, I don't know why I'm not the first call, but after that, when we started engaging, there were moments that you will get frustrated and say, I don't know why I'm even talking to you. This is a waste, a complete waste of time. I don't know talking to you is going to help me or do anything for me. 
you know, and and sometimes there was even some Preach. Preach. some, some <laughs> anger, uh, <laughs> but that anger was was yeah. was, was, was uh, as a result of the confusion, really. It was a result of, that, was, that you were going through. It was the result of the sin cycle I was in. I mean, we we're gonna speak very clearly. Like confusion, that's it. <laughs> the, the sin cycle I was in, the, the cognitive dissonance, that cognitive dissonance. I didn't understand any of those cycles I was in. So I was just reacting as if I was normal, as if I was healthy, as if I was operating in a space that I should be understood and mm complied with because I'm speaking practical. I'm speaking rationalization, speaking rational lies. I had convinced myself that the lies I was telling made total sense. So why 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 won't you believe it? But by the grace of God, by surrendering to a person with your degrees and, and your knowledge and your understanding of theology, we were able to come to that understanding of this is another space of surrender you're going to have to accept mm. or it's going to be the next wall you're going to walk into because you've given yourself the keys and yourself isn't going to do the driving anymore. I yeah. need to get the keys to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this is what experience have taught me. Um, and this is true not just for people I've worked with, but it's true also for me. I have found myself in that place. Uh, people in general, uh, particularly men, frown at therapy because therapy uh, requires vulnerability. And vulnerability is one of the layers of surrender. Especially high value. Men, because yeah. they, they got it figured out. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when there is a refusal to be vulnerable, the, the subtext with that is that what they're really saying with the behavior is that um, nothing is wrong with me. See the arrogance there? Uh, nothing is wrong with me. I am not weak. Only the weak need help like that. I can do for myself and whatever I need, I can get it on my own. It's a fallacy. That's a lie. Absolutely. From the pits of hell. We all need each other. That's what we're once, like literally once, born for. Interconnectedness. Yeah. I, I read once, I, I read once um something that said, something to the effect that said that we may be hurt in relationships, but paradoxically, we can only be healed in relationships. No one can be healed in isolation. And I think I should repeat that. Um, we may be hurt in relationships, but paradoxically, we can only heal in relationships. And, so, and Holy Spirit, as, as you say that, man, I, I just want to jump in and say, like, I, in this program, you got the, God the Father. You got God. But he has three persons. Mm -hmm. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I just want to just give this transparent moment, this explanation, so many, someone that may need to hear it, that you heal only in relationships. Even God examples that. He's never alone. We can't really understand what it is to be God and to always have companion within yourself at all times and perfect companionship, perfect transparency, perfect mm -hmm. physiolo perfect physiological needs met, perfect emotional safety met, perfect security met, uh, perfect esteem, perfect love, perfect respect met, perfect belongingness, you know, perfect achievement of potential. We can't understand that. But that is the respect we have to give and acknowledgement that he is three persons. That is what is the real message there is why is God three persons? Because you can't heal alone. Yeah. God, he has to do 
everything that he wills needs to be done. So if healing is a requirement, what makes you think God doesn't heal as well? But it's all a part of his continuum of who he is. He isn't, he doesn't need to heal. He is healing. Mm -hmm. We need to heal. And we need to heal. And the way we heal is by imitating his process. By stepping into the understanding that ourselves, we can't self-heal. This is a foolish belief in the pits of hell yeah, yeah. of self-actualization and manifesting health. We need his companionship because his companionship provides us relationship, relationship with him as the father, him as the Holy Spirit, and him yeah. as the son, that it gives us, even if you're alone in the jungle, you're alone trapped underground and you're in a prison cell. You're not alone. Yeah. You're able to heal. And that was the purpose. That was the beginning of the genesis for me realizing I was in isolation. I knew it. Didn't mm -hmm. really know how it was affecting me. And that was the beginning of the Holy Spirit, not just knocking on the door, but me opening it to Jesus, opening it to the Holy Spirit, opening it to God the Father, letting mm -hmm. him in. And they were sitting with him. Now, they, they're here right now. They're always with you. That's like, right. I'm, I'm never alone. That's right. I might, I, I, I might, I might be lonely at times, maybe, like human beings can be, but I'm never mm. alone. Love is never alone. So I yeah. just wanted to piggyback with that. With That's what this part of surrender process is about achieving. Achieving our hierarchy and needs through the relationship provided through the Trinity. The three yeah. persons that is God. Yeah. yeah. That is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. That we never have to to, to, to seek, all we have to do is surrender, and, and they're always right there for us.